Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be looking at the Spinosaurus, and specifically one feature that made me think Spinosaurus is not aquatic. Specifically not an aquatic pursuit predator, and instead more of a wading animal like a stork or a heron. So, let's hop into it. So, this is the paper. I was looking at papers for my video that I was making about Spinosaurus, and for an essay I had to write, or a paper I had to write for my, uh, my paleontology class. And I came across this paper. Evaluating the Ecology of Spinosaurus, Shoreline Generalist, or Aquatic Pursuit Specialist by David W. E. Hone and Thomas R. Holtz, Jr. So keep in mind before this, I did not think that Spinosaurus was um, a wader. I thought it might have done some of that, but it was mostly an aquatic pursuit predator. But this paper convinced me. All right, so firstly, I want to go over some terminology, which I think will be helpful. Look at this. It's not that crazy, but... Anterior is towards the tip of the nose, and posterior would be towards the end of the tail. So it's like going down the vertebra. And that is along the sagittal plane. You don't need to know sagittal or coronal. Um, and then that's the blue line here, anterior to posterior. T tip of the nose to tip of the tail. Dorsal to ventral, that is dorsal, which is the backside, to ventral, which is the stomach. They have these two skulls of two other animals, which you can kind of consider as the alternative lifestyles of Spinosaurus. So first they have a stork, which is a wading animal, um, and they walk through water, they're tall, and they look down at the water and they pick out fish that are swimming by. And they have what they call, in this paper, a posterior, oh my god, posteriorly retracted naris. So you can see their nostrils, instead of being towards the edge of their nose, they're brought further back, brought towards the eyes. And that allows them to look down like this. See how these dudes have their head down and they're picking up fish. Because their nostrils are further back, less often their nostrils, their nostrils won't be in the water as often. This gives them an advantage when they're looking straight down. So they don't have to worry about the water line hitting their nostrils, them having trouble breathing and all that stuff. And then down here we have a Nile crocodile. So that would be C and D. And for the Nile crocodile, they have Neris, which again, Neris is just the skull opening for the nostrils. Their Neris are dorsally positioned Neris. And this allows them to rest with minimal exposure of the head, which you can see in D. So funnily enough, you actually can't see the Neris in this image, but that's because instead of being along the side of their skull, like they are in the stork, they're on the top of their skull. All right, take a gander at this. You see that hole in the middle? That is where their nares are. Those are where their nostrils are coming out of. And because their nares are dorsally located on the very top of their back, uh, on the very top of their skull, which is like the same side their back would be, that allows them to have nostrils that are above the surface. So you can see here, those are its nostrils right there. And that helps it to rest in the water while it's swimming without water getting in its nose. So let's take a look at the Spinosaurus skull now. This image, you can see, those are its nares. These are three different ways a Spinosaurus could position its head while it's doing something related to the water. So in A, this is it while it's uh, wading. So it's leaving its nose above, its nostrils above the water while looking down, looking for fish. And you can see because its nares is um, posteriorly retracted, the Spinosaurus is able to look down the water while not letting water in its nose. And that is its nose right there, little black oval. This is it, where it would be doing something similar to a crocodile or an alligator, where it's a uh, nares, it's swimming along the surface of the water, resting, and it's a uh, nares is like basically at the water line. So because the nostrils are on the side of the skull instead of the top, that makes it a lot harder for the Spinosaurus to swim in a resting position with its head at the water without water rushing in. If the nares were instead on the top of the skull, it'd be a lot easier for it to breathe. And here in C, you could see uh, Spinosaurus coming up for air after being submerged, and it's just only using its nares to breathe. Keep in mind, a crocodile and alligator wouldn't have to lean its head up like that because its nostrils are on the tip of its skull at the very at the top side, so they can just keep their head neutrally uh, as if the crocodiles were in position B. So for a crocodile alligator, these nostril holes would be moved to the top of the skull up here. Here's a drawing of Spinosaurus. You could see its nares are on the side of its skull instead of the top. 
And here's some looks at the Spinosaurus skull. This one is a low-res CT scan, it looks like. Um, and this one, maybe not a CT scan, maybe just a 3D model. This one's a, a replicate from Amazon, so you know, take it with a grain of salt, but I don't think they'd mess up the nostrils that bad. But again, you can see here the nostrils, the nares, are, nares, are definitely not on the top of the skull. They're on the side. Uh, this is, again, a really low-res image, but this is a situation where it would work for the Spinosaurus to have these nares and nostrils that are brought back on its face so when it leans down it can look down at the fish without um, getting water in its nose. And just for one more example this is an alligator skull. Again nares on top of its head. Any animal that, I'm not gonna say any animal, but most animals that are swimming in the water they want to be able to keep their skull um, minimally above the water they'll have nares that are on the top of its skull. Not the side unlike the Spinosaurus. So, just look at this visual for a second. This is what convinced me that Spinosaurus is more like a stork and less like a crocodile alligator. So, what do you guys think about that? I find it pretty convincing towards the idea that Spinosaurus was more of a stork than a crocodile, more of a wader than an aquatic pursuit predator, and less specialized for an aquatic lifestyle, or a semi-aquatic lifestyle. I want to see what you guys think in the comments below too, but please keep it civil, no insulting, no name calling, no uh, cussing, just keep it friendly discussion about a cool dinosaur, please, that's all I ask. Be respectful, main thing, respect. Um, not necessarily towards me, well, be respectful towards me, but I mean, be respectful towards everyone who leaves a comment, even if it's clear they're like a baby or you're like, oh my god, they're totally wrong. Be respectful. Also, leave any questions you have below about Spinosaurus, other dinosaurs, I'm by no means an expert. But I like Googling stuff, and I like reading some papers, so I think I can figure something out. Or maybe someone else can answer your question. That'd be super cool, too. Please source stuff if you're going to like state facts, also. My question for the day. What kind of lifestyle do you think Spinosaurus lived, and where does Spinosaurus rank in your favorite dinosaurs? Let me know below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.